Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We'll be speaking with Dr. David Neubauer. He's joining us here as Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Johns Hopkins Medicine. He's joining us to discuss some new insomnia drugs that have the potential to reduce the risk of abuse and overdose. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. David Neubauer. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm always happy to talk about the problem of insomnia. Well, of course, I, I did mention your position there at John Hopkins. Give us a, a brief look into your professional background and a little bit of uh, who is David Neubauer, MD? Well, I'm a psychiatrist and I'm also a specialist in sleep medicine. I've been here at Johns Hopkins in the Department of Psychiatry and working with the sleep clinic for several decades now. Is sleep something that you were interested in when you first went into psychiatry? Is there some personal thing that happened that put you uh, into this specialty? Well, nothing all that personal. When I was very young, I was uh, quite interested in the brain and psychology, and so I had an interest in sleep. That was latent for a, a long while until I was doing my residency in psychiatry and recognized the importance of sleep in relationship to mental health. We know that, uh, of course, a lot of people who have mental health disorders have trouble with their sleep, but we also know that uh, people with sleep problems have an increased risk of developing depression and anxiety and, and various other mental health disorders. So it's really important from that point of view. Is insomnia the, the only major sleep disorder that exists? Uh, what is it? How is it diagnosed? And how prevalent is it? Well, there are several different sleep disorders, including sleep apnea and narcolepsy and various others, mm -hmm. but insomnia is the most common sleep problem. And it really is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. And while people may experience those from time to time, a, di a diagnosis of insomnia disorder really involves uh, the recognition of, of persistent sleep difficulty by the current criteria going on at, at least three months associated with, with the daytime uh, impact. A lot of times that may involve fatigue, um, irritability, um, and, and other factors um, that, that can lead to, the, to that diagnosis. Are there long-term risks associated with insomnia? Yes. Well, there is increased risk for people developing uh, depression and anxiety, but there's also literature showing that people with insomnia have increased future risk of cardiovascular disorders. Um, lack of sleep can also be associated with the, the development of dementia. So a sleep disorder such as insomnia can contribute to dementia. Right. Well, lack, lack of sleep in general, and uh, it's an emerging field in terms of the research, but it, it is a concern. Uh, but overall, you know, we know that um, people suffer during the daytime when they do not sleep well at nighttime. So uh, we certainly want to recognize those people who do have insomnia and uh, promote uh, the evidence-based treatments. Um, those involve cognitive behavioral therapy, which, of course, is a non-pharmacologic approach. And then there are various medications uh, that are used for treating insomnia, um, several of which have been approved by the FDA for this indication. I did mention that there were some new drugs. You said several of which have been approved by the, uh, the FDA. But as far as the risk of abuse and overdose for some of these sleep disorder drugs, what are some of the different types of medications? And are there other substances, uh, maybe natural substances, herbs and things of that nature that can help people to try and improve their sleep? Well, there's little evidence to support the use of dietary supplements. The one exception is there um, you know, maybe some indications where um, melatonin may play a role, uh, but otherwise um, they, they tend to be not so beneficial. There are over-the-counter sleep aids like diphenhydramine and doxalamine that um, may be beneficial for some people for short-term use. Um, there are some prescription medications that are not approved for the treatment of insomnia that sometimes are prescribed, but once again, there's limited evidence. And then there are the medications that are approved by the FDA for treating insomnia. Um, there are four broad categories. There are those that are related to benzodiazepines, and they have certain risks and benefits associated with them. Uh, there's a medication uh, that is based on the melatonin system. Uh, there is a, an antihistamine, which is low-dose doxepin that's approved for 
treating sleep maintenance difficulty. But the newest generation are the dual orexin receptor antagonists. And, and these are very interesting um, historically uh, because of the mechanism of action uh, that, that, that we understand. And so it's a very targeted approach um, that is able to help um, antagonize the um, activity of the orexin system and therefore enhance the ability to fall asleep and remain asleep. Uh, and so these are the newest medications that have been approved. There are three of them that the FDA has approved for treating insomnia characterized by difficulty with sleep onset and sleep maintenance. There is Suvorexin and Lemborexin, and the most recent one um, is Deridorexin. And so these medications um, have been available over the past few years. And one of the very appealing features of them, in addition to the fact that they're beneficial for sleep, is um, there is low potential for um, abusing these medications. There isn't any uh, evidence of, of withdrawal effects. Um, they are categorized as schedule for controlled substances, like some of the other sleep medications are. However, um, it's not based upon um, any sort of withdrawal or, you know, physiological discontinuation symptoms. Rather, um, these particular medications um, are tested for abuse liability, you know, with the uh, recreational sedative abusers from the community. And uh, so these, this newer generation of the DORA medications are, are listed uh, as having some abuse potential simply because of the likability uh, of when these people are, are given the medications. Interestingly, um, these DORA medications are studied for the treatment of substance abuse disorders. And so uh, we're, we're hoping that it's at some point um, the, the DEA, the FDA, are going to sort of turn around um, this uh, designation as a controlled substance because we think that um, these medications actually, while helping with sleep, you know, may have a role in treating other substance use disorders of people who use um, opiates and cocaine and alcohol and, and various other substances. What should everyone know about their sleep and some of the things that they can do above and beyond or without drugs that can help them improve their sleep? Absolutely. You know, the foundation of treating insomnia is helping people follow um, positive routines that can be beneficial. And those routines relate to our circadian cycle. And so the degree to which people can be active during the daytime, especially getting sunshine and wind down time in the evening, um, being in uh, relatively dim light as bedtime approaches and creating a um, conducive environment in the bedroom for sleep, and also especially following a very regular schedule of the timing of bed and when the person's getting up for the daytime. And so the degree to which that regularity can enhance the robustness of the circadian clock, that really is a, is a very important foundation. So those sorts of things that may be labeled as, um, as uh, you know, good sleep hygiene habits can be uh, helpful for everybody, including those people who do suffer from insomnia disorder. David, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. I'm hoping that you'll come back. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howe, in conversation with Dr. David Neubauer. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also find us on Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.